Right. Oh, right. Uh, microbiota, gut brain axis, and the central nervous system. The first uh, section of this article is gut microorganisms. So, under gut microorganism, uh, this is the first section gut microorganism. Now, the first paragraph is this the human gut contains various microorganisms. Uh, so yeah. Uh, did, didn't we have a question in the paper we did about uh, gut microorganisms? Like there was a chart and uh, in unit five. Unit one? Unit five, sir. In a recent. Unit four, paper. I think. No, unit four. Ah, uh, yeah, some I can't remember. Correctly. It's microbiology. I think, uh, I mean, this, 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 this article, uh, it combined uh, two theories. One is nervous system unit five, microorganism unit four. So it's a combination of unit four and five. So we have to, uh, we can learn a lot actually. For example, the basic things like here, what are the microorganisms? Microorganisms are bacteria, fungi, parasites, and virus. Uh, more than 100 million bacteria reside in a uh, human gastrointestinal tract. So that means 100 million is this. Only the gastrointestinal tract, 100 million uh, bacteria living. Uh, now, this is, this is uh, again, interesting thing which is 10 to 100 times the number of eukaryotic cells in our body. Now this number is 10 to 100 times the number of eukaryotic cells in our body. Uh, this is a little bit confusing for me because human body, how many cells in human body? Usually it says uh, 30, uh, trillion cells, 30, 30 trillion cells in our body. But this one is uh, less than 30 trillion, but it says uh, 10 to 100 times number of eukaryotic cells in our body. Uh, only the gut microorganism. So gut microorganism, if we try to get this number is one times 10 to the power eight. And this one, uh, 30 times 10 to the power 12. So eukaryotic cells, our body cell, 30 trillion, only the gut microorganisms, uh, this is a hundred millions. So it is not even billion, one billion is a hundred million. So it is less than the total cells according to uh, this number, but here it says a different number. Uh, after years of common development with the human body, the gut bacteria have reached a mutually beneficial symbiotic state. Now, in symbiotic state, both benefits. In symbiotic state, both benefits. Bacteria can benefit by having uh, nutrition and the space. And uh, human uh, can get the benefits by uh, different ways. One is bacteria. We learn in unit four, uh, they make the barrier functions called biotic barrier. So pathogenic bacteria cannot uh, grow in intestine because they compete with pathogenic bacteria. So the one benefit is the gut bacteria uh, compete with pathogenic bacteria. And uh, also we haven't learned directly uh, some of the bacteria uh, synthesize vitamins, some of the vitamins uh, that we can use. That's another benefit of uh, bacteria um, in the gut region, right? So this is the first paragraph. So we should have a little bit of background of what is the eukaryotic cell, what is the prokaryotic cells, and uh, uh, who are the parasites, and uh, uh, what is the symbiotic relationship, like basic things we can uh, learn from this. Paragraph one, right? So basic information, uh, you should uh, revise uh, bacteria. 
prokaryotes and uh, how they look like and what are the structures. Uh, it's important a little bit to revise it. Now the second uh, paragraph, gut microorganisms play an important role in promoting adult development and homeostasis. Adult development and homeostasis. Example, they can affect human metabolic function by decomposing the complex polysaccharides in food. Complex polysaccharide in food. In addition, gut microorganism can regulate gut movement. Now, when it comes to complex polysaccharide, we should know what is complex polysaccharide. Now, complex polysaccharides are we, what we learn, uh, starch, uh, glycogen, and cellulose. Starch, glycogen, and cellulose. Usually, uh, we can... Uh, main uh, carbohydrate is starch so we can uh, digest uh, starch but cellulose we cannot digest uh, plant component cellulose we cannot digest and uh, certain cases there may be uh, microorganisms they might uh, help to digest a complex carbohydrate and it's not mentioned and cellulose uh, is a fiber usually uh, we are not using uh, cellulose as a main carbohydrate source, but we can also accept certain degree, uh, some of the cellulose or some other complex carbohydrate can be digested by secreting enzymes by the microorganism. In addition, gut microorganism can regulate gut movement, gut barrier system, and fat distribution. Now, gut barrier system, we learn under the immunity, so it prevent entry of uh, pathogenic bacteria and fat distribution. Gut microorganism can affect immune function through the development of gut associated lymphoid tissue and by preventing the colonization of pathogen. Now this is a potential question. Question is this, explain how gut microorganism prevent uh, this should be corrected as a uh, colonization of pathogens. Explain how gut microorganisms prevent colonization of pathogens. This could be one potential question from paragraph two. Now, if this question is asked, we have to uh, write answer number one. Compete for pace and nutrition. Example, glucose, amino acid. So gut microorganisms compete with the pathogen for space and nutrition. Example, glucose and amino acid. Number two, uh, gut microorganism. Secrete toxins or antimicrobial proteins preventing uh, pathogenic bacteria growth. Now, these are the two uh, potential marking scheme points. Gut microorganisms compete for the space or nutrition with pathogenic bacteria. Gut microorganisms secrete enzymes or toxins, then prevent entry of uh, pathogenic bacteria. So this is one question we could expect and answer is this. And so they can affect the energy metabolism and mitochondrial function of the host. So could the they may produce yeah, antibodies? No, no, no. And antibody uh, produced by the B cells only, that human cell, but bacteria produce antimicrobial proteins. We can say uh, proteins, they can't produce antibody, 
they are not producing antibody, they produce antimicrobial proteins or toxins usually that can kill pathogenic bacteria. Uh, these are the two things. And the next one, the intricate relationship governing host and microorganism interaction suggests that when this relation is abnormal, there is a balance between gut microorganism and the host. But the relationship uh, change, that's called relationship abnormal, the microorganism may cause the pathogenesis of disease or promote the progression of disease. There should be balance between gut microorganism and uh, host, the human. If this break, there is no guarantee the gut microorganism may cause a disease. Pathogenesis is the starting of the disease, generation of the disease. Or promote on determining the diversity, uh, promote the progression of disease. If the relationship break, again, uh, they can cause disease. Therefore, recent research has focused on determining the diversity of these microorganisms to clarify the physiological role they play and uh, eventually to prevent and treat diseases by controlling the microorganism species. Now, why this relationship is changed? That's a change of the environment. The so change of the environment of the person can change the uh, relationship. For example, uh, there is a common situation when we take antibiotics, antibiotics can uh, kill some uh, gut microorganism. Some gut microorganism killed by antibiotic. Then this case, uh, the bacteria which survive increase in number. When that bacteri bacteria increase, it is too much and they can cause problem like diarrhea. So this is one example. Uh, how the situation change. People take antibiotics. Antibiotic kills some species of gut bacteria and the other species then start to overgrowth, which can cause a problem. I think uh, I will take that question. There is a previous question in unit four. Uh, bacteria called Clostri Clostridium uh, difficile. Uh, they increase in certain antibiotic and they can cause uh, disease in humans. So relationship is abnormal mean, uh, this is the situation. Now here, uh, another question I highlighted, explain how gut microorganism decompose complex carbohydrate. For example, uh, we can say gut microorganism secrete enzyme. So enzyme uh, break down uh, carbohydrate into glucose, a complex carbohydrate into glucose by the gut microorganisms such as uh, amylase uh, or cellulase-like enzymes can break complex carbohydrate. Suggest how relationship can become abnormal. So this uh, is another question. When the number of bacterial species change, such as uh, uh, antibiotics, when a person is taking antibiotics, the species uh, can be changed. So this is one uh, example. We should understand how the relationship can break. Third paragraph, there are three main methods for detecting gut microorganism. One is bacterial culture technique, traditional molecular biology technique, and high uh, thoroughput sequencing technology. Bacterial culture, uh, traditional molecular biology technique and sequencing technology. The former is mainly used for stool culture. That means this is used for stool culture. Um, this method is time consuming and the bacterial species obtained are limited. So this has a problem time consuming and bacterial species are limited. The later two mainly isolate the bacteria DNA from the stool for detection. Detection is fast and the bacterial species are complete. So 
traditional molecular biology technique and sequencing method are fast and we can get most of the bacteria, right? The stool culturing, the culture technique, uh, <clears throat> we cannot get all the bacteria. Now, uh, explain why culture method resulted limited number of species. There's another potential question. Why culture technique uh, has less number of uh, bacterial species, but uh, the traditional molecular method and sequencing technology, uh, we can get more bacteria. The later two mainly isolate the bacteria DNA from the stool. So they also use tool. Uh, this method also use tool and this method also use tool. Now, if you use tool for all three methods, why this is limited? Explain why culture method resulted in limited number of species. Okay. The answer may be um, bacteria different species Okay, I just write uh, different species need different conditions for growth. Now we take the bacteria from stool and we try to grow them, but they need different conditions, maybe a different pH, uh, different uh, uh, nutrients. So we cannot provide all conditions, right? When we culture, we cannot provide all conditions like in the gut. So they can't grow them. Some bacteria cannot grow because conditions are different. That's maybe the one reason we cannot get all the species. But if we take uh, bacteria in the stool, they can get the DNA. And uh, we will come to that, isolate the bacteria DNA from the stool for detection. Now for this one, definitely, uh, if we take the DNA, you should understand we have to amplify using PCR. So again, uh, PCR is important uh, technique to revise in this paragraph. After isolation, the samples are not enough. We need a PCR uh, technique to amplify the DNA, uh, DNA of the bacteria. So isolation technique, uh, we haven't learned in Edexcel. The complete isolation technique, we don't learn. So there is no point asking, how do you isolate uh, DNA from the bacteria? So there is a long procedure. First, we have to uh, lyse the cells and then to take the DNA and then DNA we need to purify and then we have to precipitate. So this technique we don't learn. But we learn once DNA is isolated, we can amplify using PCR. So we should have a little bit idea in this case, uh, the PCR technology and uh, culture method is uh, not very reliable because we can't provide the all uh, facilities to all the different species. As a result, there's a limited number of uh, bacteria, bacterial species we can find. <clears throat>